Goedemorgen, good morning. My name is Annie Derks, I'm the director of ITVA and welcome. Welcome to the masterclass of my dear friend and a dear friend of ITVA since a long time, Viktor Kozakowski, who was here, I think, in 1991 for the first time with his, uh, with his film Bielovi. He came back with Sreda, Svieto, and last year, as you might remember, with Vivas Las Antipodas, which was a, it's a wonderful film, and I just spoke with him. It went to 87 festivals. Please give him a big hand, Viktor Kozakowski. Take care, your heart. <laughs> Victor, welcome. Welcome in this beautiful venue again. You know, I was reading this um, magazine. It's uh, uh, the Media Fund uh, publishes this. And there's a letter, it's a kind of love letter from Menno Otten to Arta Vast Pelesian. One of the films that you selected was the film um, about the seasons. What was the title again? Season. The fourth, the season. So yeah, yeah, yeah. See how these Russian titles when they are translated in Dutch and then to English, English they change. Yeah. Uh, change. It's really, it's it's a kind of love letter. I want to trans. Is Menno here? He should be here. He said that everybody has to come to this. Okay. Well, maybe good to talk to him later and ask him for an English translation. It's so beautiful. It's admiring the film of Pelesian that you are that you chose in a. He describes it as a, 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 a film about daily life, filmed with a simplicity, but in a filmic way that's extraordinary. And uh, he said these are kind of films that you don't see anymore, not made anymore. So it's also for a lot of students that are here, I think, very interesting to see uh, this can, film. Can we switch it? Because yeah. I look like a robot with this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want people to... Oh, he's vain. <laughs> you know... Victor, I, I, I don't, I, Peter will talk with you, with you, so I won't uh, add anything. But I would love to introduce you to the moderator of today. Uh, I think you all know him for years, also a dear friend. The best there is, your moderator, Peter Wintonic. <laughs> yeah! <laughs> Peter is a filmmaker, a film critic. Uh, we say in Dutch, a uh, man of all traits. Mm. Yeah? Okay. Man. No, in re no, just, uh, just. Uh, you have your microphone. Hello. <laughs> we call him Peter Pan. Wait a second. Peter Pan Ruben Gin Tonic. <laughs> okay, Peter Ruben Gin Tonic. Enjoy. Thank you. Thank you, Ali. Victor, you can have a seat because you're going to have to endure a, a little biography because we love you, Victor, everybody loves you. The 420 people here who have taken time off this Friday morning to listen to you, enjoy many clips that uh, you've chosen. I wanted to show a little uh, PowerPoint of a uh, kind of an impression I have of you. I'm calling this session Jumping Off the Cliff with Viktor Kozakowski, because we're going to either jump off the cliff or jump off the stage. Viktor's been very busy lately. I've been trying to track him down in Barcelona and Berlin, even last week with John Apple in uh, Morocco. And then he went home to St. Petersburg, and, and we're really happy he's here. Uh, he made it here, and he'll be here all week to introduce his uh, top ten, and also uh, the seven or eight films we're playing, in fact, all of his films. So thank you from the bottom of your heart to share with us uh, for the next uh, 100 minutes or so. This is his top 10. I'm just putting this up for the record. I really would suggest you buy or download the catalog because he's written a beautiful essay about the nobility of cinema and the role of the cameraman, essentially, in this essay. And uh, you see this uh, filtered through all of the, his selections. This is, he was born in St. Petersburg, or Leningrad. It's changed its name since he was born. Uh, and this is a cinema there. Maybe he was a child, went to that cinema. This, I think, he was... <laughs> when he was here, maybe once upon a time. I first met this man, I thought he was a 
and he was showing the uh, Belle Vue there. P P Peter yeah. Rubens, don't make memorial. I'm still alive. Oh uh, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you're not as young as you were in that picture, though. But uh, <laughs> this is the this is the imp we say, <laughs> uh, the magician. I, I think he's going, he looks more and more like Rembrandt. Don't you see a similar face there? We'll get some golden light on you. <laughs> you know, he made the night watch, and there's a guy there painting a painting of a picture of a painting of Rubens, of uh, Rembrandt. Maybe this is what Kozakowski does too, in a certain way. Although he calls me Rubens, it's only because I'm fat, I think. So in the correspondence we have, anyway. We have a lot of fun. But maybe he's Shakespeare. He's a kind of poet, oh, I think. Man. I'm going to go overboard. You is just it, wa is it wa is watch it out. <laughs> You're like Hamlet then, because it's, uh, the question is, and you, in your top 10 questions when you came here last to do a master class said... Uh, the, my, my new film called uh, To Shoot and Not To Shoot. Yes. <laughs> You're going to be shooting me at the end of this. It looks like your master class, it's your... Uh, yeah, this is the very existential question. You are a philosopher. It's a Hamlet question. And uh, in the questions, how to... Your ten, ten, ten rules. Uh, these are his own... Uh, it's, we're playing every one of those films he's made since 1989. We'll see some clips uh, this, this morning. We've also combined clips with excerpts from some of his top tens. That was the beautiful Sveto he made of his son. And I remember in sitting in the city cinema weeping when I saw that film. It was so beautiful. And this, I thought, I would, you can close your ears now, but I call this a masterpiece. I sat here in the cinema last year. Well, everybody went to the party to watch that. This is an amazing shot from New Zealand dead whale and then the rock on the opposite side of the earth to, to match and flip the same image. It's about maybe your Buster Keaton, we'll see. <laughs> but we're going to get into some deep things. This is a painting about the end of the world. And when I've watched all your films the last month or so again, we have a certain picture of where, have you, where you've been and where you're going. Maybe we end up in hope, like this image. I hope we hope. But I see you more as a, a Don Quixote. You're Don Quixote with a movie camera. It's a kind of quest. Yeah. I see a slim similarity. You're tilting at windmills then and now, and you'll see this reflected in all the films. So we're going to go to the first clip now, which is a, a film made with Victor and about Victor as he was making of even La Santa Pots. It was, it was quite close to, 
to the end of the story. Uh, uh, again, but what was, to my, what was interesting my crazy was he did friend, not stop. My crazy, I, I love you so much. You've Can only I? made eight films, oh, only, but there have been great films, but you've won 88 prizes with him around the world, including the Yoris Evenson popular film no. award as well. Uh, what was your question then? All right. Uh, interesting, that guy, he was filming me and he did not stop shooting. And uh, I remember uh, when I came, uh, Lele, uh, Lele is here, my teacher, and her husband, he made a film about people who has job with risk, like test drivers and uh, pilot and Arab who test first um, airplanes. And once they were making film and with test driver and they put camera and driver said, I will drive on this road and just film it and it will be very nice. I will make kind of slalom. So, and then in fact, uh, they knew that Kai is very much prepared for any crash and all so on, but in fact, in, the, in, one, in one turn, camera was making flips and, and they, they stopped filming. They came to, the, to, the, to that guy, to the driver, and they, 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 they opened the door and, uh, to be sure he is safe and alive. And he said, did you film? And they said, no, we came to help you. And he said, you assholes, you know, <laughs> I probably would die and you, you have to make your job. At least this guy was filming me in this moment. It was, um, yeah. It was a surprise, but it's part of this uh, trickster. You are the kind of magician, playing tricks on everybody all the time. But it's not, uh, I'm not sure it's film about me, actually. It's, it's someone who looks like me, talk, talks like me, but it's not about me. Your doppelganger. It's a really a film about the process, and it's playing also here at ITFA. I, I would really recommend people see of even Les Antipods and then Where the Condors Fly as a kind of pair. We're looking at the kind of creative process you have, fantastic uh, relationship you have with a musician in there, scenes captured as you're really passionate about the music. And you see that through all of the films that you've made and also all of the, all of the films you've chosen in the top 10. You really see a kind of interesting integration of sometimes classical music through the, through the films. All right. Mm. Well, we have lots of clips to go through, and we want, really wanted to start. I think maybe you could talk a, a little bit about what, in, in a kind of general sense, uh, motivated you to bring together those top 10 films. You, ah, it's very, you, very simple. You know, uh, there are, in, in this year, I guess it was submitted like a few thousand films into the competition in ITFA. A few thousand, imagine. So it, it means it's only submitted films for people who know about ITFA, who believe they, have a, they made a great film. So in fact, in the world at the moment, we produce about a few, few dozen, how do you say, dozens? Thousands. Thousand. No. T dozens. Thousands. So it's like a huge amount you cannot yeah. even ten, imagine. 10,000, yes. And more, much more, much more. So, and it means it's, uh, everyone has his own history, right, of cinema. So I'm traveling in, around the world with fil uh, film uh, institutes, film schools, and I talk with students. And did I ask, did you see this film? No, no I didn't. I said, did you see this film? No. And then, then I start punishing them. How, how you can make film without watching this film? And, uh, you know, in Russia, it was, a, it was a famous joke about a guy who came to a film, a literature institute and asked, as I, uh, he was applying to be a student in literature institute, they asked him, did you read Tolstoy? He said, no. Did you read Dostoevsky? No. But you, did you read Pushkin? And after all, no, I never, did, never read Pushkin. But why do you want to be a writer? And he said, I'm not a reader, I'm a writer. So it's, and, 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 <laughs> And I start to punish them. How did you, how, you didn't, if you didn't see it, uh, 10 minutes older, how you can make films? And, uh, and they say, but did you see this film? They ask me. And I realized I didn't. So, <laughs> so many films now, and everyone made his own history. Then I understand. When, when Ali asked me to make top 10, I understood. 
I cannot be objective, right, anyway. So I cannot choose really best films made ever in the planet. So I decided just to choose films which was, was important for me when I was young. Uh, and, and when, for me, it's like a, basic, like a bicycle in the cinema. If you, if you do, this, this is what's important for me. Then I chose films which, were, which motivate me to make my own film. Like, when I see those films, I really want to, to do something beautiful. And then I, I put two films, three films in the, in the end, like Sakura film, um, Mikhail's film, and uh, Position of Star. It's like, for me, it's three way how we can continue make documentary at the moment. Like, it's like, for me, those three guys, they show us what, which way we can go. It's three different way, but this is for me. The, but there are some people here, for example, for example, I, I believe, I met yesterday Alan Berlin, I love his films, but I'm not able to do that. I simply have no sense Alan of Berliner, humor. Yes, yes. Yeah, I have no sense of humor. I cannot make it, so. And Alan use, some people use words to, before f image, right? So some people has idea, written idea, they, they, they use image to, 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 to tell story. And what Alan does, he, he used words as a sound, just, and together with his image, it's becoming different dimension. And I, I, I'm simply not able, so I wanted to put his film, but I, I know it's not my cup of tea, I, I never will do it, but films I chose. For example, Lala, she's here, she's like, you know, just if you have, if you will have time, I, unfortunately, no, probably not, but, uh, you know, if you even just walk on the street with Lala, you will know what this filmmaking is about. Like, because she, she never right. walks like, simply fair. like, she always look. How, how, how many years you are here? Mm, fifth, Twelve, yeah. Twelve? Yeah. Close your eye. What color is the eye of Ali Dex? Mm, red, it must be red. <laughs> <laughs> she was drinking last night. <laughs> so, you see people, he, he is with Ali like 20 years, and, he doesn't know. So we, people don't use eye, you know? People don't use them. And so, and uh, uh, Liala, she, she goes on the street and she sees everything. She sees everything. She, you, just, you just go with her on the street and she says, oh, did you see this tree? Did you see this tree, beautiful tree? Look how strange this branch is like a nervous, like, then did you see this dog? Look at this dog. And she sees everything. She just, like, she's eating, eating space around her. This is quality mm. we have to, you know, I was filming in, I, last week I was teaching, not kind of, it was kind of forum session in, in somewhere in, 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 in Russia, in the middle of Russia. And then it was people who wants to be filmmakers. They gave us, they gave us a lot of, like, projects and, and I was reading them and I realized, you know, I, I cannot explain if, I, I see people don't see anything, so I, they are blind, they don't, uh, okay, you can be filmmaker, you're a nice person, you have camera, but I felt it's not enough. And then after everything finished, it was kind of party, and those people who was applying this project, they start seeing. Uh, it was in Siberia, in the middle of Siberia, and they start seeing, in a way, this fantastic talent. And I realized they have talent, they have a voice, and they have a talent, in blood to sing, mm. but they don't have a talent to, to make films. Mm. What color are your eyes? Uh, it depends <laughs> if, I, if, if, if I'm in love ah. or not. What color are they when they're in love? The colors of the rainbow then? How much do, how much do you see? I mean, well, how much do you see? Let's, let's, yes. uh, let's, let's take any example. Let's, let's... I think it's easier to see in the dark like that, probably. You wanted to show something. We will show a lot of because was maybe start, right, you, you, were, uh, you went to film school. You were also in, influenced by Chaplin and uh, uh, by Tarkovsky, but you also were influenced by two very important t teachers. And we want to show a clip, I think, of uh, Losef uh, to begin with a couple of clips, and maybe we can talk about that. If so, if we're ready, upstairs in the faraway projection booth.
I, I don't know, guys, if you saw it because it's such bad quality. It was made in 35, and I never had chance to make a new print. And now the old print is completely destroyed. It's 25 years ago. And it's copy from copy from better come from copy. Yes, so sir. you probably did not see it. So I don't know if you saw that it's grave, graveyard, right? Did you see it? It's not a city, it's a, it's a graveyard. So uh, the idea was we start in absolutely, it's a, at the first film, this is my first Your film. first film, yes. And this is my first image, so. Uh, the idea was I start with total black, then something appears, kind of small light, then you see it's kind of candle, or then you see maybe it's a light in the, then you see kind of silhouette of the shape of the city. Then, then you see probably it's a uh, probably it's a light inside me a window, and then you see it's a sun sunrise, and uh, and then in the real end, like last two seconds, you're supposed to see this is a graveyard, but then uh, image change, and and this is was beginning of my film career. It was my first film, and I decided just it was too radical. It was no, I said okay. Somebody said, people will not see it, people will not see it. And, and I said, okay, then people see two different films. If someone saw it, if someone saw that it's a graveyard, then he will see one film. If someone did not see, he, if he just saw it's a city, then he saw another film. Mm -hmm. it's, it depends how much you use your eye. You know? This is a film by, uh, about uh, Alexei Fedorovich uh, Losev, the, a philosopher, very influential on you uh, as a, the person who really motivated you to start making films. He, he said, uh, and you qu quote, that there are two types of intelligent people. Some say what they know, while others think while they speak, in order to try and say something that they did not know yet. No, it's, something that uh, yeah. suggests itself in them. It's like if you make film, and if you, if you know already what you're going to say, I would not suggest to make film. I mean, because people will, will see you are repeating. If you, now, if you ask me questions, I know answer, so it will be boring for people. If you ask me something interesting, so this is more your task. In my job. Yeah. Your job. To ask me something I'm not ready to answer, mm -hmm. then I will think, and then it probably will come out something interesting. The same with filming. What, if color, you, are if you, you, what color are your eyes? <laughs> uh, I told you, if I'm in love, it's green. <laughs> if I hate... Green. Yeah. Green with envy. So, uh, so if, if I film and I'm surprised, so for me, most important, I'm happy, like, I'm just happy if I see something which I did not predict. And, uh, and just it happened in front of my eyes. And I noticed it and I was able to film it in an um, in unusual way. So then I'm most happiest person. Then it makes sense for me to make movie. But if, if I know in the beginning, like to script everything and, and then just to repeat it, I, I, I will simply not do it. We have a, another clip when we play right away, I think, about a moment you capture, actually, right. and from the same film, right. with, with the, yeah. uh, from Losef as well.
Uh, honestly, can I can I say? I don't know what did you see. I don't know what did you see. I mean, it's also always depends what people see. But it was, I know exactly. This was the moment when I first time realized I'm a filmmaker. Uh, I will explain. You know, I was crying at this moment, just simply crying like hell. I could not stop it because I was happy. I just simply was happy because around me was few people, few his students and his wife and. Uh, the one guy who helped me with sound and no one saw anything and I simply saw his last breath physically he just minute before he was telling me that he will die 24th of May he was telling me in a way it was a few months before actually but he told me just minute before that he will die 24th of May, very soon. And actually, his lung was broken. So, no, something was wrong. And the uh, doctor said he has to exercise his lung. And then, uh, then he start, how do you call it, blow, blow it? Uh, yeah, blow, um, yeah. a breathing so, machine. And I saw his breathing, probably last breath. And then it was the dust on the table. And when he squeezed it, the dust was flying. So I physically saw his probably last breath, and I've captured it in the film. So, and this is the greatest man in Russian history ever. He's like best Russian philosopher. When I saw it, I, I realized this is like, this is, I, I feel something that incredible. It's mm. more than, it's like first orgasm, in, I mean, in cinema, I, possible to, to compare it. Well, yeah, I mean, you're capturing the last breath of a, great philosopher, yeah. and it launches your, your career in a sense. And, but it also brings up this point, one of your ten rules that you discussed the last time you were here, uh, about the interaction or interrelationship of ethics and aesthetics when it comes to, uh, to filmmaking. Everything is a kind of ethical decision as well as an a aesthetic decision. Did you? It's a big question. We, we, we simply, you spoil all, all story. You, sp you spend 10 minutes to, for a sim shitty memorial. Yes. We have no time. And you're still alive, yeah. We have no time for real stuff. Yes, but... Because it's ethic and aesthetic. This is like biggest talk, business. Yeah. In our job, this is, we are only job, we are, we are only art. We, we have real, real kind of, it's a mixture between uh, if it's aesthetic and aesthetic, you put in one glass and then, then you have documentary. This is only art which can really play with these two elements. And this is, but this is a big special subject. Another time we can, if you like. Yeah, we'll invite you in another time for another top ten, another a set of different films. But what, what, shall we keep on going with clips then? Uh, another teacher of yours, uh, with uh, uh, the film A Tram Runs th Through the City. It's had also different titles in Russian. Uh, maybe we can show a clip. Uh, is this um, ready up there? Thank you. 
Вот так сама себя катаю по утрам, полупустой вагон. Родные места, избеганные из детства. Мать у меня тоже работала на трамвае перед двойной кондуктором в парке Леонова. Здесь меня в детсад водили. Люблю я свой трамвай. Больше всякой другой работы. Если хорошо подготовишься, выспишься, то очень радостно работать. У меня редко бывает плохое настроение. Вот у нас один водитель говорит, я иду на работу как в гору, а я как под гору. People, it looks very simple. In the beginning, it looks very simple, but in fact, it's it's a really uh, you know what? It's kind of for me, it's a symbol of cinema. Like, if anybody here is musician, anyone? Like, can you imagine com what what is in the brain of composer? Can you imagine how it works? How they how they pick up music? How how it came to their brain, I don't, I have no idea. No one, no one can explain so far how they, it's very abstract thing. And, but cinema, especially documentary, is very, very ordinary, natural for people. Like, that's probably why we are so, so many of us. Because what you do in the morning, you wake up, you look to your partner, or, and you're trying to understand is he good now? Is it, he still love me? Or he, then you then you look through windows and you see is it good weather or rainy or sunny? Then you go on the street and then you then you see something. Then you see someone. Then you see faces and you tr try to read is it a person you like or not? Or then you go something happened to you. Then in the evening you come back. And then you probably remember something. Some, some images stays in your brain, right? It's the same same as filming and editing, right? So you pro, you you capture in what you like. You film in what you, and then in the ever in the evening you edit it. You edit it together in in a story. When I was young, what we did is we invite. Can you can you do me a favor? Yeah, sure. Mm. I'm at your service. What happened to you to today? Um, I woke up very early. Stop, stop. Can you do me a favor? Can you stand up on the chair? <laughs> oh my Just God. Just do it, man. Don't if, worry. What happens if I die? Just don't worry. How can uh, I help can, you? Can we dance? Can I help you, man? So, okay. Are you okay? No, I'm not. Okay. Don't worry. Don't worry, man. Don't worry. Don't You're worry. You're like a lion tamer. No, no. Listen. Listen now. <laughs> now. Take your, take your time, man. I'll take do your my time. Tai Chi. Okay, now listen to me. Now say it again. What happened to you today? But, but <laughs> now. I met Victor Kozakovsky. Ah, you see? Okay, okay, okay. That was so, a nightmare, I tell you. It was a nightmare. So, you see, he can, he can if, if he is sitting, he can say bullshit. Oh, I, I woke up, I drink tea. But he, if he is on the, on the chair, he has to say something important. Say. <laughs> like meeting you. I mean. Sit down. Uh -huh. <laughs> I'm so, afraid of heights too, you know. So when I was like 20, everybody in St. Petersburg knew that at 8 o'clock every Friday you can come to Victor and you can get free lunch, free, free, free dinner, only if you stay on the chair and say what happened to you today. <laughs> not yesterday, not day before yesterday, not one year ago, but today. But you have to tell it in visuals, like in, in pictures. That, we know you saw it, not you think, but you saw it first and then you think. Mm. Visuals before words, but visuals before thinking. Yeah, that's, that's, that's why, why I, I chose these films. Say, the image before and, and camera work, extraordinary in every film, extraordinary camera work. And you cannot imagine, can you, did you say you love me? <laughs> I did. It's also the name of a trilogy can, you made, too, about love. Can you, can you write it down? Uh, okay, I'll write it, yeah. In Russian or uh, French? Mm. Well. I, I, I see you through, I see through you. You are a clairvoyant. And I, I, I'm sure you have a paper here. Uh -oh. 
Yeah. Can you write, I love you, Victor? Can you write? Okay. You want a biography too, or just? Uh... Yes, okay. So one thing he said it to me, it was just a joke. But if he wrote it, this? Are you crazy, man? What's wrong with you? What, what is this? So it's a, it's a big story now, actually. It's a, for, me, for my opinion, one thing we can say in another side, thing we can write, it's a huge difference. Mm. And the difference between what you say and pronounce and what you write, it's completely mm -hmm. different. Same in the picture. Mm. One thing you see in another thing, how it will look in a big screen, how it will look like in a big screen. Mm. And how it's seen. The, the lovely thing I thought when you were, when you were corresponding also with Jost, who we, much from the programming team, who we really should give big credit to for bringing together all of your films and uh, a nice thing you wrote was, the, you would mention all the films, but you would also mention each and every cameraman yeah, in yeah. the film, that, that they should be, have equal credits in the program. Absolutely, I believe, I believe because the way, the, the, this horrible way you wrote it, like, it's like a chicken <laughs> pen. You know, this is your, this is your way to, to sign it, to, yeah? And th that's why I make my camera myself, unfortunately, because almost all my films, because I believe this is essential of a, um, For example, did you see opening film here? Did you guys see opening film here of John Opel? Mm -hmm. There is a moment in the end when two couple, uh, when, uh, when couple in Georgia fighting. And, uh, and cameraman, what he does, he, he the, so if you didn't see, I tell you. So they lost daughter in Norway during this horrible story in Ireland. So they lost her daughter. John came there to film uh, the uh, re, uh, parents, her parents. So in the end of the film, they start fight about, she wanted to tell more and she, he, he was trying to say, stop, shut up, da, da, da. And cameraman was dealing with focus. He was changing focus from her face to his face, then to her face again. Then to his face, and that's what this actually cameraman was doing. And I'm sure John Apple was not able to guide it. It was his choice, mm -hmm. and exactly this is why it's good. This is why cinema works. If he will, for example, if somebody filming you now, from yeah, he can he can make focus here. And then we see great Rubens, you know? He can also focus here, yeah? And then we only, we don't see how fat we two boys are here. So, we, yeah, so, I am so, so that's why I'm saying, cameraman is really guiding you, people who watch it. So mm -hmm. that's why I, I believe cameraman is such a, in documentary is most important person. It might be equal, equal. Since you shoot almost all of your own films, you must have an incredible dialogue with yourself all the time. Yeah. And so which in, picture are you listening to? It's, it's a good because you're never alone, so you, ne you cannot be alcoholic. Because alcoholic is a person who drinks alone. As far as I'm cameraman, director, and editor, I always have a company. <laughs> uh, yeah, a plurality of uh, companions. Maybe if we will move on then to our, uh, the next clip, which is our mama is a hero, Mama Giroji, I can't pronounce the Russian, by uh, Nikolai Ob Abukovic. Abukovic. Nikolai Abukovic and Alexander uh, Yakubovsky cameraman. This is a typical example. If you chose, if you chose, if you chose, if, if we chose the right clip, right clip that, that, that you then, you, then you will see, I believe those guys invented something important. And, and I have all huge theory about, about this. And we see it first, and then I tell you. So, thank you.
I, I I don't know, guys. It's it's um, we have not we have no time to really talk about precise. I, for me, it's kind of alphabet of cinema. You know, I call it this particular element. I call like I have a stupid theory. It's called magnet theory. Magnet magnet, magnet theory. Yes. Yeah. It's like um, um, it's like uh, uh, can I can I can I briefly <laughs> sit here? Like, yeah. Yeah? Can I? Yes. <laughs> Basically, it's not comfortable, a little bit. No, no it's I, okay. I, I, I tell stories to my daughter like that. That's good. All right. So, you see, he can say it to a daughter, but <laughs> if I sit on stage, <laughs> it's kind of too much, right? Mm. Too much. So, that's, I call it theory of... Uh, of Proximity. Yeah, of magnets. Magnets. So, I mean, um, where to put camera? If I film, if you film situation, uh, how I can film you now that 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 it's still comfortable to you? Where must be camera? Must be here or must be here? Where where what is the distance between me and and you? And actually, me it's it's just not me. It's viewers, right? So, what what is the distance between you and people who will watch you? Can I go closer? Mm -hmm. Can I go more? <laughs> yes, <my> <laughs> Already something. <laughs> so now we start. You know, the, did you play magnets when you were a child? You know this. If you play two magnets, if they are like this, they don't react. They si simply separate. They have own life and own space. Own space. Then you go closer. Then you go closer. In the simple moment, they start shaking. Like they start reacting one on each other, like this. And then if you make one more step, like this. If you make one more step, you're going to break those glasses. Then, boom, <laughs> they, do, do you remember this? Did you? Do you? Did you try this in, when you were a child? This is, for me, theory of magnets. So there is only one position every single moment. There is only one position for camera. Because if you make one step back, you don't feel this ten, and, uh, Connection, yes. strong connection. If you make one step closer, you destroy your environment, right? So you will be not comfortable. And, and, and people who will watch it, they will be not comfortable. The audience right? won't be comfortable. Yeah, yes. so this is, but, but it's very complicated because it's kind of, it's kind of, it's your power and power of camera. It's, it's very complicated story. It depends how, how you look, what is behind, which lens I have, a, a lot of a lot of things together. But generally, and if 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 to be very simple, this is a and the convergence of time uh, and perfection and the being in the perfect place. Don't go so far, the, man. The, the perfect uh, the perfect time at the what was John's film? The wrong time, wrong place. This is the perfect time, the right place, the right time to get kinds of quality of, of, of that shot, at but, least. What, what, what is painful for me, you see my films in very bad qualities. You see uh, clips of my friends in, in terrible qualities. We are like, uh, we, have no, uh, we have no good prints, we have nothing like, we have no DVDs, and we are like awful in production. Yes, this is a big problem about uh, getting our that, that archival was reason, quality. That's why I, this was the reason I, I, I brought those films here, because I know this is probably last chance. Yeah, we have to preserve all of this stuff. And you probably will never see it again. No, no we're going to start to preserve all of your work uh, in the proper formats. We're showing things uh, today in 35 millimeter from computers, from different uh, sources, and to make it a bit comprehensible, we've had to transfer it all into one system. But th that film also was about a woman, uh, a kind of flip side of those kind of heroic worker films that came as kind of uh, Soviet Union propaganda. Yeah, it's, yeah it is. But she's, she, she's always in, in, in duty. She's a hero and she has a medal from Communist Party and she's like doing her best uh, in, in doing her best in Fabrica and Fabrica? Do you call it Fabrica? In, in public, yeah. In Fabrica? Um, uh, uh, factory. From factory, right. So, and she, she actually has no time to see her family. So Her family was pre yeah. preparing. And th this is the moment when she came back and she's extremely tired. She has no power. She's, she simply cannot undress her shoes. So. 
and her family has provided uh, a, a big uh, celebration for her and she's yeah. too tired to, yeah. to enjoy it. We'll go to your kind of version, we'll say, of the noble uh, right. Russian and, and post uh, Glashnost uh, film, the film that I first saw of yours in Montreal when we first met, uh, maybe 20 years ago almost now, in, uh, The Bell of. So we have a clip now of, of a great uh, uh, scene towards the end of the, the film. Я пойду потопаю, да повиляю попаю. Посмотрите на меня, какая попка у меня. Неужели тебе рыбинка не холодно зимой? Неужели тебе миленький не весело со мной? Нечего, что босиком ноги не озябнут. Мы на то надеемся, что босичком согреемся. Пошла плясать моя умница. Впереди самовар, сзади кузница. Опачки, папа-папа-папачки, тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-тру-т
that's the point, I believe. That's like one thing what we can, I, I can easily take camera and film you now. You're a good friend of mine, why not to make film about you? And what people, this is what people do. I'm a nice person, you're a nice person. We have a camera, a cheap one, why not to make film now? Everybody can do it. But that's what I call you people. Let's do something which normal people cannot do. They cannot do. We have to be, we have to keep profession in the level that normal people who just take camera, who doesn't know how to clean lens, he, he needs to know there is a difference. If you look to, learn, uh, to, to position among the star, he, he, he used very cheap equipment actually. It's not a big, big budget film. It's very simple, small budget film. But the way he used camera, even professionals need to discover, like to think, fuck, what did he do? <laughs> what did he do? A single shot cinema it's theory. It's yeah. just, the, and also, he, that's what he have to do. We, we shouldn't stop making good films with people. We, we are digging our self grow, grave. Grave, yeah. Because it's kind of over, over we are polluting planet with over, making too many films, too simply too many. And, and we have, at least in people who is in this room and this festival, we have to make incredible films, unbelievable films. And we have to like really try to do something impossible, to film something absolutely impossible for normal filmmakers. Mm -hmm. That's, that's a, a, and you can say, okay, you need a budget. No, but position them the star prove you. No, you don't, you just need to use your, Invention. Yeah. And uh, this film, uh, Belov, really uh, launched your career in the internationally. It was, became the match in the, in the spring that went around the world. It went to 100 festivals, I think. You won 100 prizes, uh, Come on. something like that. Anyway, it was the How I Met You. I mean, it was, uh, it's uh, enabled you. The people could relate to the village and, uh, and, the, and the characters that you found uh, and inspired you. And uh, it's a beautiful film. I, th I think we can go now to uh, actually something with quality because I think we, it's the one clip we have of 35 millimeter uh, print uh, uh, of uh, Frank Hertz, who you call a genius as well, uh, 10 minutes older. Uh, we'll, we have to, we'll start it from the beginning. We don't want to ruin the print either. So at a certain moment, we will say cut and they will keep the print rolling so they don't have to take it out of the projector, but we will make the screen go dark. So this is... Uh, if we're ready with the projector. Uh, but before you watch it, I need to tell you, you know, the overage of the shot today, in our days, is six seconds. So if you, if you watch all Hollywood movies, together with all our movies, the overage of length of the shot is six, six seconds. And um, it was, in the beginning, it was very simple. Camera was not allowed to to film long, right? It was like first camera of Lumiere, they, they only have like 20 seconds. Eh? Mm -hmm. Then it became bigger and bigger. When I start my, make my first Russian camera was allowed like to make two minutes film. Eh? So, but, um, so simply, but if you look Tarkovsky, he made like short five minutes long, like seven minutes long. It was ridiculously long for that. But, um, but Until the Russian arc, which was 90 minutes long, yeah, one so shot. Yeah. That's what I'm going to say. So, but then Hertz made one shot, 10 minutes. And for me, it was a symbol because this is exactly the size you can put inside your magazine. And, and this is like very conceptual. And he is just, I don't know, how do you call this Peter? Uh, um, Peter Powell, how do you call those guys around Christus? Prorok? Prorok? Yeah, like cactus guys, Bangladeshi prorok. Apostles. Apostle, yeah. His Hertz rank is really an apostle of cinema. Mm -hmm. Okay. So it's one minute, uh, one short, ten minutes. We won't watch ten minutes. So. You have to. <laughs> yeah.
Thank you. Uh, there is another film uh, uh, called um, Look to uh, the Face, made by Pavel Kogan and Pyotr Mastavoy, cameraman. And um, yesterday I was presenting this top short, uh, from, short film from Top Ten, and I saw one beautiful woman, and I noticed her immediately. She was beautiful and immediately something like a like person you love, uh, like immediately, and you, you think this is a person you, you can, um, I don't know, you can fantasize as much as you want. So anyway, she, so, so, so suddenly, uh, after this film, she went out and she, I was on the, on the corridor and she came to me and she said, what do, what do you want us to, to say, to, what do you want to say to us? I said, I don't know, I didn't, I didn't want to say anything, I just wanted to show you films. No, but why are you are here, man? If you don't want to say anything, why are you are here? And, uh, it was kind of transformation. I almost fall in love with this girl, and then suddenly she came and she, she started punishing me. If you have no message, what are you doing here, man? <laughs> and I, so I said, maybe I, I don't have a message, but I, I just want to say, people, open your eye, and, and then life is beautiful. Then you will see the world completely different. Then probably you can never be ugly again. I mean, you probably never be aggressive again. People, Peter, I don't know how much do you see. I don't know. Uh, uh, can we check anything? Like, can we can we make a test? Mm. Let's say we let's say we take any person I like and uh, I, I mean here uh, I mean I don't know but I, I visually like and we try to test. Uh, I don't know. Can 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 you stand stand up for a second? <laughs> uh, just enough. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, okay, P Peter. Yes. What what you can say about this beautiful woman? Mm. She's been listening at at attentively, attentively. No, what I mean, what what you can say about her? Uh, uh, well, don't look anymore. <laughs> Just don't look anymore. I think you've hypnotized her. No, come on. I'm no. not talking about me. I'm talking about her. I don't know. It was a brief encounter. I can tell she has two education. Is it correct? Correct. I can say she lives in the mega city, like, and she lives in the second floor no more. Is it correct? <laughs> I can say that she likes porridge in the morning. Is it correct? I can say she, she has two dogs and one cat. Is it correct? Two and a half dogs. And I have she is two months pregnant. Is it correct? <laughs> You still, you, you just don't know it, but. <laughs> <laughs> you see how different people can see. Yeah, you're a clairvoyant. So, that's why I'm saying, people, open your eye. You can always say, okay, I sent you a mail in the night, and probably I know you, and I ask you, uh, please uh, answer everything, yes. But probably I, I don't know you. And I just see, did you read Conan Doyle? Uh, no, about now you're Sherlock making her Holmes. blush she red. She's blushing. Did you say. read Conan Doyle? Uh, 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 Conan Doyle. About Arthur uh, Conan Doyle. Sherlock, Sherlock Holmes. Sherlock Holmes. Yes, yes. I guess all film students supposed to read Watson, it. You were Watson, I think, in that. Yeah, yeah. The, all students supposed to read it because he, he could be a great filmmaker, actually. Yes, the, uh, the author, anyway, was an yeah. observant. Uh, uh, you know, I don't think you're going to call you Rembrandt anymore. I think I'll call you Rasputin. The mad monk of Be Russia. Be careful with this last part of this yeah, name. Yeah, yeah. Right? Shakespeare. Uh, but we, uh, Sveto is a film I saw in the city, as I said. Sveto, the name of your son. It's a, con a nickname for your son. Uh, it means happy, clear, and joyful. It's a kind of holy word, too, kind of apost apostle word. I remember it's it's a it's another one shot film or almost there's a bit of a cheat it's a cheat there's a cheat there but and we yeah. watched it as you rushed the print up to uh, it fell one year and it's a, it's a most beautiful film where you maybe you explain this mad experiment you did on your son for two years pro prohibiting your son from watching himself in a mirror. Uh, this is where I understood that you weren't a filmmaker, but you're a kind of conceptual artist. Every one of your films, you could really analyze. And no, I it happened like very accidental, actually. I was a student in film school 30 years ago, and uh, I lived in a very small, uh, uh, 
in the small in a, in a big huge uh, student's house in Moscow in Vgik, uh, I had a small room and we were with my wife in, in that room and I didn't we didn't even notice uh, that we had no mirror simply we were so busy with I you know I was I studied like screenwriter first and we have to write every week every week you have to write new script do you want it or you don't you have to write a new script every week and then you have to watch four or four films from history big films every every day and then you have your kid so i simply since, since that time i never shaved because i simply had no time to even think about me or whatever so and then my son was growing up there and then suddenly one day he was about two. One day, the door was open from my room, and someone, now he is a great actor, a Russian famous actor. At that time, he was just a guy, student in film school, and he was passing by with a, I would say, kind of, he was passing by, you are my son, right? He was, the door is open, he was with a mirror, and my son simply for a second, he saw reflection. And he saw kind of child. Uh, and he went to the corridor and he realized there is no child. So then I understood this is a movie. So what I did is I took camera, and that time it was Russian camera with two minutes film stock inside, 35 millimeter. And we took, we bring camera, uh, we brought, 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 brought yeah. uh, mirror. And my star came to. He said, he came to Miro first. He said, hello. Then, then he took his toys. Then he realized something wrong. Then he came to the corner. And then he, he was sitting there like seven minutes, thinking. And my stock, film stock gone. Like, it was just two minutes inside magazine. So, and I, I was crying because, fuck, this was a man. This was a film. So then I was trying to convince my friends, if someone pregnant, I, I, I was trying to say, come on, people, do me a favor. <laughs> don't show, don't show Mira for, oh, they say, okay, 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 we, we do it, we do it, we do it. Oh, we love you, Victor, we do it for you. So then two years waiting, 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 then you come, you open, you came with Miro, you start filming, and then the child said, oh, it's a Miro, I saw it. And, and it happens that grandmother or grandfather... Yes. Uh, Somebody had spoiled yeah. the experiment. So they hate me because they, because they say, oh, this is crazy idiot. I don't want to spoil my child. But in fact, Miro is a new thing, right? People mostly did not see it for ages. And only the last couple of hundred years, we, we use Miro. No, no yes. more, right? so, so when my second son was born, my wife was... Great one. She said, okay, I know you want it, so we do it. So we took our tall mirrors from our rooms and we closed windows, like we paint windows in something like for him beautiful. And every time we, 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 we even changed spoons at home, you know? No just, spoons, no. Just, just, I mean, we took plastic ones. They, they, they have no reflection. Every time we went to a street, I was, I, went, I was walking like two steps ahead to check if there is no any... <laughs> There is no any reflection. There is no any car or something like that. And you, didn't you put a bag over your child's head as you walked around the streets? So when he, when, so when I start, when he was two, I understood he is clever enough. So I, I, uh, we decided so now we have to film. And 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 I, but happened miracle thing, and and unfortunately because of this, I have. I, I, I did made, I did made a cut. My my whole idea was to make one shot before he will say it's me. And it took him about one hour to realize it's him. So what I did is I made a construction from four mirrors, which is like you only see one, but in fact it's four mirrors. And that in the one moment, particular moment, first you see him here, like staying here. Then you suddenly see him behind mirror. And he knocked to the mirror. But camera, it looks like camera behind mirror. In fact, it's not. I made a special you three cameras, const yeah. construction. Uh, I like to do things that people don't know how I did it. But anyway, so, uh, but in the moment, 
about 20 minutes, 25 minutes after beginning, he, he made exactly the same with my first child. He came to the corner, he was seven minutes silent. And I realized I cannot use it for so long because, uh, because people will never watch it, no one will buy it. And so I, I made a cut for, to show this film, but the last, yesterday you asked me what you will do one month, before, if you know that you will die in one month's time, what you will do. I said, I will re-edit my films in the way they're supposed to be. Yeah. So I will, if, just before my death, I will, uh, I will add give the seven this minutes back. just 60 minutes, one shot. Let's see a clip of this beautiful film. Well, that's a beautiful film. That's really about this moment of self-actualization yeah, and cognition. I don't know if you notice. So I'm taking all my all my life. I'm having images in my brain with the films I like. Like, for example, this one. I I saw Hell's Run film. I was 18. He came to Saint Petersburg. It was the time when guys. Uh, we were sharing films with each other. He came to St. Petersburg to our studio. And I, I, I still remember exactly this, that day. He, he, he screened his 10 minutes old. And I, it was always in my head. And then I, what, I, what I do normally, I, I'm trying to a little bit improve it, if it's possible to, if I can say it, if it's possible to improve. I mean, this is classic stuff, and you cannot improve it. But generally, same with mama, our mama hero, ma, ma, mama, our mama hero. I was trying to make bellows just in continuation of uh, Abukhovich film. So, uh, what I, what yeah, we did, we did try to pair uh, some of the films together just to make these kind of connections. It's going to influence. So when I made the t-shirt, I was trying to to continue Lila's film. Tram goes on, on the tram, yes. 
So it's kind of... Which is a continuation, uh, maybe, of a Man with a Movie Camera, too, these kinds of continuities from your own study of film history and... As, yeah, it, yeah, as it gets that's for sure. incarnated yeah. by one apostle to another apostle. We have, a, I think, a, a clip now of... Uh, we'll get to the last maybe 15 minutes. We can get to some questions. I'm sorry. Uh, we're trying to go through a lot of ground with all the 17, 18 films you have here chosen or made yourself. Uh, a, a great uh, master and apostle, uh, really, uh, Sakharov uh, in Spiritual Voices, which is a five-hour long film that you've chosen to play here in your top ten. You know, uh, before we watch the clip, I want to tell you, um, of course it's five hours, and you can say, wow, we don't have five hours. We came here for, to make business, to meet people, to watch films. Uh, from, it's from one side. From another side, um, you know, every time we are making film, we show a film, uh, we actually, what we do, we actually steal your time, right? We, what we do now, we steal time of those guys, right? The, the, this is... Thieves, the, we're thieves. Yeah, yeah, definitely, because they have only one life, why have they to give us two hours of their life? So it's kind of, it, it was, it is this kind of deal between us, that you agree that I will steal your time. So, and I, I'm telling you, this six hours film is absolutely exceptional story, because you will never be in the border between Tajikistan and Afghanistan in your life. Never. You're not going to be there. And that, the guy, he gave you opportunity to be there and just physically feel it. Like physically be there and feel everything what's going on. And, and the way he respects those people who, 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 who are soldiers on the border. Incredible. He's actually limping, you know? Sakurov, he's, he's limping and all his life. And, and it's, a, it's a really huge task to go up to the mountains, Tajikistan. But he came there with, with Steadicam, with Crane, with, like, because he respects those guys. And just absolutely unbelievable. And, I guess it will be very simple clips from there, but look how he respects those people. That's why I said to young people, at least clean your lens, people, because you have to respect people who will watch your movie, and you have to respect people you are filming. If you don't clean lens, how you can film people? If you, That's uh, your main point in your essay, really. It's about the nobility of cinema, but also yeah. lens cleaner. No, but generally saying about Sakurov, if I, if, if, uh, if I can, I believe he's kind of really biggest scientist in our job. So I believe he, do not make film, he does not make films about view, for viewers, for audience. He probably does it for us. I mean, in every his, in each, his film, there is something absolutely new you've never seen before. The like new letter on alphabet, just maybe just comma, just maybe just umlaut. Yeah, something, but in every film, maybe all film you don't like, but if you look properly, he's really like scientist, like I don't know, like um, Faust. Yeah, he made a Let's film go. called Faust.
who else will do it? Who else will film those guys sleeping? There are no ones. They are not famous. There are no ones. Yeah? Who else will go on mountains? And who else? You know, to make this short, by the way, when he's, you need a crane because you cannot put camera on the top of the person. You have to make a crane, and then you, and you will have to wait when he's sleeping. Then you have to come to the with crane and you look. Who will do this? And who will? Who? What we do normally? We 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 use norm. We film normal people. No no one knows. But what we do? We use them, right? Yes, we use them. We yes. use them. We want them to say what we want them to say. We we are tricking them that we know the, what we need to know, what we need them to say. When we, we are tricking them that they will pronounce what we actually want them to say, and it's we use them. But he doesn't use. Not them. Alexander Sakharov. Not no. uh, Viktor Kozakovsky. It's, it's the act of a vampire most of the time as we're sucking stories and out of people and using them, as you say. I want to maybe move around the world uh, the way you did with a beautiful film that we had here last year. And it has also gone on to, I think, play a hundred festivals right, and a hundred pr pr prizes. Wait, wait a second. Yes. Before you go, this, can, I, I want you to pay attention to one corner. When you will watch this clip, uh, when, when I will come to Shanghai, Look to the right corner. You probably will not notice if I will not say it, but then I will explain it. So I'm always looking to, for motivation. When I'm filming, um, I, I kind of wait, looking for why my camera moves this way or another way. Why? For example, I filmed Lala 10 years ago, 12 years ago, and I talked to her, and I realized it's, she, she was too much personal. I realized it's kind of, it was... It was too personal, but I understood that it was enough for me because I know her for 40 years, but for our audience, probably it's too much personal. In the moment she started crying, I, I, I took to, turned camera to the left, to, just to the wall, just to the wall, to give her space to, to, to... But that was motivation inside my feeling about what I see. That's exactly magnet theory, is that what I said. But in this case, as far as plain fulfill, I, I just wanted to find a way why I have to, I wanted to turn camera upside down, but I, I wanted to, to, to find motivation. And I was dying with this short. I didn't know what to do. I, I need to turn, but there is nothing I can find which can help me. Suddenly, in the right moment, you will see in the right corner appears a car, which, which carrying um, concrete. And when a car was concrete, it's speeding, how do you speeding around? And just watch it. Viven las antepods. Thank <laughs> you. 
Yes, you're making concrete float in the air. It's wonderful. I think we, we can have the house lights up a little, and then we can uh, we have time for maybe 10 minutes of questions or so. And uh, also, Victor will be around at most of the introductions and around the ITFA for the next 10 days, uh, introducing the top 10 in his own work. So there's lots of times to confront him or ask him questions uh, personally as well. So can we have the house lights? And there's a microphone or two microphones. So just raise your hand and we'll try to get to a few questions. Uh, there's one mic on either side, I think. Anybody? There's one there in the first row, second row. Um, you seem to get very close to your subjects that you portray. H how do you approach them when you first uh, get to meet them? Ah, it's a very important question, actually. Uh, um, it's also, if you remember a theory of magnets, so I'm trying to imagine what you feel. Um, imagine, it, imagine there is a door here, right? And you suddenly, you, you, you open the door, you saw maybe the toilet there or whatever. There is something there, you don't know, you open the door. And then you see two people are making love. So what do you do next? You simply close the door, right? But you don't do it in cinema, right? If you, if you, if you go into the cinema and open and show people making love, you're just watching it. So, so that's what I'm saying. One thing you said and another thing you write. So, um, for example, in Antipodas, um, I, I, was trying to, I, I was trying to imagine what you will feel when you see these guys. You see these guys first, you don't want them to cry immediately, right? Or you don't want them to tell you uh, everything about themselves in the first second. So what I did is I, I came to the, I was in the opposite side of the river for one week. I filmed them in a the distance, maybe 50 from 100 meters. Then every day I was making a couple of steps closer, a couple of steps closer. And then during two weeks, I came like this, and it was, he looks like Jack Nicholson, but it took me two weeks coming closer and closer. And that's why, uh, that's why, uh, and also what I do normally, I pretend that I'm not very much curious about what they will say to me. I also pretend, I, I, I never ask questions actually, I never make interview, I pretend that if I, if I need to film him now, for example, I need to film him now, and I feel like if I put camera, he will be, will be not comfortable. I will pretend that I, there is something bothered me, something very much bothers me, something here, yeah. something wrong here, I don't know. I will, I will say it's wrong light, and, and then I will say, then I will ask someone to stay here and to do something like this. <laughs> So in that moment, he will realize he is not important, actually. <laughs> so I realized that long time ago. So, so this is a, a, the uh, of the seven principles of magic. This is called. Uh, can you do me a it's favor? It's called misdirection. Can you it's do me a favor? Can you do me a favor? Uh, I'll do you. Can you do me a favor? Yes, I will. Uh, can you just? <laughs> I, I, can, I, can, can, yeah, so I can jump off the stage. No, 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 no you don't need to. Uh, can I fly? I just, Did you no, see? no, no. Try to imagine. I'll reenact the opening no, 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 of John so Apple's film. Listen first, then yes, do, okay. okay? Yeah, so what I need to, you to do, mm -hmm. I want you to climb stairs from there to here. Mm -hmm. Can you do it for me? On my knees? No, 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 no just okay. normal way. All and right. imagine I'm filming you, right? All right, okay, I'll do that. Things we do for art. In a normal way, okay. But I'm not ready. Oh. <laughs> Wait a second. I'm ready, go. Thank you very much. You see how awful is it? If you ask people, if you ask people who is not an actor to do something, they are awful. If they know you are filming them. But in fact, I was filming him in the moment he was climbing down. <laughs> and that moment he was perfectly uh, uh, normal. He was perfectly you got, so. You got I, my better side. Yeah, I, it was chocolate side of you. <laughs> so what I'm saying is I, 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 do not, I do not ask people to do something for me. I don't ask questions. I'm just waiting. I'm going closer and closer and closer. And, and 
there is sometimes if you need for transition or for editing, you need something like like this, like someone crossing a room or whatever, or something like this. I'm tricking them in a way they don't know when I was mm -hmm. because. Normal people will never do, but there is actually a very great option now in the cameras called pre-rec. Uh, you know, you know pre-rec, right? Do you? In uh, I don't know why red camera. Uh, it wasn't in the it wasn't the red one first in the first edition. And now in in the second one in in, in the red epic they they kind of uh, deleted. It. I don't know it's a mistake because this was revolutionary option in camera because. Uh, if you re did you see very often you are waiting for someone will uh, I know in the end I, I made a trick so in the end of the show he will fall down because I I broke this chair in the, in the morning <laughs> I came in the morning and I know in the certain moment he will fall down imagine I want to film this so I don't know exactly when it will happen but I know it will so I was preparing all night this yeah. trick so. Imagine I have a camera, so, but probably it will happen accidentally because he will make a strange move and he will fall down immediately right now, and, and then I lost it. So I cannot say, can you do it again for me, man? <laughs> so, so that's why there is option pre-rec. So it, it used I... to be when we made documentary, very often we lost this episode, and we have to say, what did you say, guy? Can you repeat it again? But this pre-rec, it loops camera, 30, 30, 30 seconds running all, all the time. Then you just press button, mm -hmm. and 30 seconds before you have. So it's revolutionary for a documentary. You you never missing real action, real 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 things, right. unpredictable the, things. The things that you missed uh, before. We have an, another question right behind there, I think. Actually, I know the theme of my question, but I don't really know how to word it. I was thinking when the woman was being filmed crying. That was probably from quite far away, right? Or and which film you mean? The one that you showed of the woman in the kitchen. All right. Or Mama. Ah, you, you, it's not uh, Mama, I'm, I'm a Mama Hero. It's you not know. yours, yeah. I know, uh, yeah, but, it's not my, it's But Nicolai I'm just saying it's probably it, filmed yeah. uh, from quite far away. Well, yeah, it's a yeah. bit like spying into her crying. Yeah, kind that, of. that's what that, that's another point. That's yeah. a very important point. That's great. This is a great one. That's the best one. Um, that's another theory I have. I, um, yeah, that's the best one. Unfortunately, in the end. So, what people, what you guys do normally, we 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 have a structure. We have a dramaturgy, right? What we do, we we most of more mostly we we. In school, they told us we have to tell a story, right? So this is what we do. We, we know how it starts and how it ends. And what I do, I do opposite. And those guys, you know, what I do, for example, you have such shot, and you definitely know this is kind of spy stuff. You know, they definitely know. But then, uh, then I told you first, first of all, you have to remember that in the moment you realize she is not comfortable knowing that someone probably can do, they, they made a step back, but this is not important. Important is, for if you have such shot in your movie, you need to think that if you show such film in the beginning, half of the room will leave you, uh, room. Because they say, half of the people here, they will say, I don't want to see such crap, right? Same as I told you, when, when you see people making laugh, you will close the door. Same story. So what, I'm, what I think documentary dra dramaturgy is, you have to prepare your audience to see this shot and not blame you for spying. So, kind of, you have to put it in a very simple words. I want to seduce you in the beginning. I want you to love me in the beginning. I want you to believe I'm not an asshole. And then, like you watch 60 minutes tissue, you just like it because it's strangely, <laughs> you see asphalt, it's playful. So, just piece of asphalt, but it's still, so if you like me 60 minutes, then you are ready to see this ugly episode in the end of Tisha. So this is kind of another way to make dramaturgy. Do you do, do understand? So um, I'm trying to say that uh, dramaturgy in documentary is something else than in fiction. But mostly what I'm, if, if, I can, if I'm allowed to give advice, I'm, tr I'm talking about myself. I was an editor from 20, I guess, and 
and I edited many, many films uh, before I started making my own films. So, and I invented kind of strange way to do it. Normally, if you need to film one hour, normally you do like rough cut two hours, right? Then you make it shorter, shorter, shorter. I don't make it. I don't go this way. If I need film one hour, I first make 15 minutes film, 20 minutes film. So I'm making, I'm making, how do you call it, these bones inside you? Skeleton? Skeleton, yes. Skeleton. I'm making kind of skeleton. I'm, I'm choosing shots which are crucial for this movie. The shots which cannot, the film cannot, the film impossible for film exist without those shots. I put them on timeline and I think, what, what shall I do for you to be re that you will be ready to see them, to see them and not blame me and be ready to react on them in a way I, I want you to react. Because, because you allow 400 people and everyone has different opinion about what they see now, right? Someone like him, someone don't like him. But my duty is to make you feel, so you have 400 films now watching him. 400 different films. So my duty, as filmmaker, your duty is to, to be sure people in this room, they simply feel what you want them to feel. This is my way to co construct dramaturgy. Is what I'm trying to do, I'm trying to, as I told you in the beginning, when I knew that one people will see this graveyard in a, in the, from my first shot, and other people will see it's a just shape of the city. So I'm trying to feel to, to understand what do you feel in this moment when you see it. Mm -hmm. Then I build, I'm changing your emotion. I'm trying to seduce you to, to even to make you to, to, to bother, like have to, that you, you feel like it's boring. 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 Yeah. boring then yeah. next minute I, I use it. I know this is a boring minute, but then I use it for, so it's kind of, maybe it's wrong way to do it's because Magic. Because in the end, I'm very poor, so I'm totally in debt. Don't follow my rules, you know, just... It's, it's a kind of magical manipulation. I want to get to uh, some of uh, your uh, recent film. You right. just finished. It's the world premiere in two seconds from now. It's a no, two don't take it serious, people. It's it just a joke. Uh, some people making global stuff. It's a new me media stuff. It's called White Poverty, right? White Poverty series. Yeah, and they asked me to do a serious film about poverty in Russia, and I said, I, sorry, I can't in three minutes. I mean, not, not because it's three minutes, because poverty in Russia is a big issue, and, and you, you really have to... In Russia, you, you cannot be... You, in Russia, you have to be left or right. You have to be for Putin or against Putin. You, ju you cannot be just objective and just make it, otherwise they hate you. Even they hate me if I film Tisha from my window, they say, oh, you don't like Russia. So, so I decided I will not do it. But then suddenly I saw something on the street in Berlin, and it was just a joke, and I saw it in the night. And I, may, I called to my sister and said, do you have any camera with you now? Come here, and for uh, one hour. And, and magic happened just in front of my eyes. Then he said, we film, we, you will see three minutes. Two and a half minutes we filmed first, and my assistant said, we're done. And I said, my experience tells me, no, we didn't. We, I said, let's go to drink coffee in the train station. It was night, four o'clock four, four o'clock in the morning. We came to drink coffee, and then said, now time to come back. And we came back, and I saw the last shot when the lady, this lady, and uh, there is another one, uh, experience. Uh, I, I was working with another friend of mine who was, who made the, I, I, I dedicated film Antipodos to two guys. They were Antipodos in cinema. It was Vladimir Dyakonov uh, and Dyakonov and Sergei Skvartsov. And Dyakonov, those cameramen, so, so, and Dyakonov told me, when you film here, you film here, like you look there, there look, you, you spend hours and hours filming in this direction. Don't forget once, look back. Then you will see something really important for your film. Yes. So we'll uh, turn to Lullaby. This is a world premiere screen. But don't take it serious, uh, it's just a joke.
去。